Have you ever noticed already somebody want to come up and take up this morning's offering? Ties.
Fellowship one another. 
your grandchildren that the sky gets here today. And I just praise God for all of you that can to be here through mommy and daddy and your grandma and his last and your grandma. We see the babies every once in a while when they come and we get to see how big they grow. It's a blessing this morning. I lift my hand to Jesus for each and every one of us. Amen. Somebody else this morning.
just him setting up the, the equipment and stuff and some of the songs that he was playing just to test the music. My sister and I were standing here crying. We were already so blessed. Blessed by the, such a wonderful day. And I know a lot of people don't love the smell of a smoke like we do, but my sister and I are country girls, Amen. and we love the smell of the smoke so Amen. much. And that, to us, is a blessing because we just, it just reminds us of home, you know. So we're just totally blessed, and we just are so glad to get to share this with you all. And uh, we are called the Family Ties because we're all family, and you were talking about family, and this is my son Shane. My sister Kay, and of course you all know Rich, and that's the reason I get to be here because I'm married to Rich. So. <laughs> and he married you.
times our eyes with tears run over with pain and sorrow is our fate but when this race is finally over We'll leave that all outside the gate. But inside the gate, inside the portal, we'll sing and shout and sing. Some call you 
worse than when And the doctor can heal Your own bank can lend Till all your pockets are free But if yours is a case of a sin stricken soul for the problem to face. There's only one place to go. Just climb up that mountain where it still springs the fountain. That sparkle. Don't you gamble on life with all your luck and your skill. Because you can't play the card the death's gonna need. For the Bible has planned who the loser's gonna be. There's only They were nailed to a tree. So climb up that mountain where the skin springs the fountain. That spark of crimson. God Calvary's blood. That stage of blushing heard of. It takes a black heart. Usually, I leave most of the talk and that too, Shane. He's unavoidably detained over there somehow. I like it when they leave the talking up to me, the sound up to me, the distraction up to me. <laughs> We've got a lot of confidence in here. I'm a night shift person, so this is way too early for me to get up. This is it I'm working out. The, camp, the campfire, I'm just all I can think of is, man, where's my fish? going? <laughs> smell the campfire. i got to be fishing somewhere, right? Yeah. So I will never stray. 
some of us, in one form of that singing group or another, um, Shane is saying, he really started his ministry as a babe in arms when we used to have a dune buggy and we'd go up and down the road and as soon as the dune buggy, would, the wheels would roll, him and his big brother would start singing Jesus Loves Me and all them songs. He couldn't say the words plain yet, but all up and down the road you could hear our little moving disciples band going up and down the road from the time he was little. Then then he really started singing and traveling for the Lord by the time he was 10 years old. He was on the road. So if you've seen him somewhere in ministry, that's why, because he started very young. That was um, just a couple years ago. <laughs> I been, the reason I said that is because I was so thrilled as I kept watching more and more of these young kids coming in. Amen. And it is a blessing. It's a blessing yeah. these days because yeah. we still do this a lot. And it's a real blessing these days to get to go to a church and see all the young people like this because it's not like that everywhere. But we are praying that it will be like that again. We really want it to be like that again. And then while I'm sharing that young people's uh, testimony, I'll also tell you about my sister here. I can't even remember it. I'm, I'm four years older than her, but I can't remember us first singing together. But they tell me that she was so young that she couldn't walk all the way up to the front of the church. So they carried her up to the front of the church and set her beside me for her to sing with me. She was that young that she couldn't walk that far. So I also remember something about that. Mom, I didn't know whether I was supposed to sing Jesus Love Me or Wake Up Little Susie. Yeah. <laughs> I've been embarrassed. I know that. I, I bet I remember that part. We're certainly glad to be here with you. We're going to sing one more and then we'll... I, I hear singers all the time say, we're getting out of the way. I don't think we're in the way. I think yeah. we're on yeah. the way. Yeah. And we're not going to get off the way. Right. But we'll let somebody else come up here and get back on the way too. You all sing along with us. We definitely have so much to think.
telling you, if you want to hear a drum player play them right, Shane Graham plays them right. One of the best I've ever heard, if not the best I've ever heard playing drums. Can play a keyboard, can play a keyboard, uh, can play, yeah, multi-talented. And he's a nurse. Anointed drummer. Shane used to be uh, work med flight. So, you know, if you've flown on one of them whirly birds, he might have took care of you uh, flying down to Cabo Huntington and wherever else. It, you actually, you worked out of West Virginia mostly, didn't you? So, probably not here unless you was over there and had a horrendous crash. <laughs> All right, in Jeremiah chapter 13 this morning, uh, just a few verses of scripture reads like this. Verse 16, chapter 13, verse 16 says, Give glory to the Lord your God. Before he calls darkness, and before your feet stumbleth on the mount, dark mountains, and while you look for light, he turneth it unto the shadow of death, and make it gross darkness. But if you will not hear, my soul shall keep in secret place for your pride, and mine eyes shall weep sore, and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock is carried away captive." Say unto the king and to the queen, Humble yourselves and sit down, for your principalities shall come down, even the crown of your glory. The city of the south shall be shut up, and none shall open them. Judah shall be carried away captive, all of it shall be wholly carried away captive. Lift up your eyes and behold them that come from the north. Where is the flock that was given to thee, thy beautiful flock? What wilt thou say when, thou shalt, when he shall punish thee? For thou hast taught them to be captain as chiefs over thee. Shall not sorrows take thee as a woman in travail? If thou wilt say in thine heart, wherefore come these things upon me, for the greatness of thine iniquities are, are thy skirts uncovered and thy heels made bare. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? or the leopard his spots. Then may also do good. They are accustomed unto evil. Therefore will I scatter them as a stubble that passes the way by the wind of the wilderness. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you for the songs. We thank you for the testimonies, Lord, for everyone that's put forth the effort to be here this morning. I pray, God, for a little while, Father, you'd anoint these lips of clay, Lord, with words of eternal life. Feed us, Lord, most of all from your table in Jesus' name. And amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Uh, two or three different things stuck out in that passage of Scripture uh, as I read it this morning. Uh, one uh, said, can the leopard change his spots? I begin to think today, we live in a world today that people, bit, uh, when it comes to religion, they think all you've got to do is just change the way you're living. Start doing good, quit going here. You know, I hear people all the time, preacher, I'd start serving God, but I've got to get my life in order. I've got to straighten this up. I've got to learn to quit cussing. I've got to uh, all these different things. And I want to say something, my friend. You can't change. You might try, and I realize today, hey man, there are programs out there that they will, uh, 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 you know, one of them AA, and they, where they take Alcoholics Anonymous, and they can take a drunk in there, and they can take him through all those steps. But I'm telling you, the only way that a man can truly change today is to be born again. When we realize we come into this world, we are born 
a certain way. And a lot of it uh, sometimes has a way with we're brought up. Sometimes it has a way uh, because uh, of the things that we allow to come into our minds, the things that we read, the things uh, that we listen to. Maybe it's the type of music or it's who we listen to. And it, it kind of uh, molds us into a certain shape or our minds into a certain state. And we want to do things. And I realize, hey amen, listen, I'm as stubborn as what anybody else is in this place today. Hey amen, we've all got our minds and we've all got our own ways that we want something done. But understand this, this is what the Scriptures said. God said that your ways are not my ways, that your thoughts are not my thoughts. So in order to get the ways of God on the inside or the thoughts of God on the inside, Side. Amen. It takes a regeneration. Amen. Not just of the mind, but of the heart. The Bible tells me that the heart of man is desperately wicked, and only the Lord can know it. Another scripture said this. Amen. He said, As far as the heavens are above the earth, is my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. When we think about the things of God today, do we compare them? Amen. To how we think they should be. Or do we compare them to how the word, God, word of God said they should be? I want you to understand something. Amen. We covered this, I think, uh, uh, two weeks ago in our uh, Bible study down on Wednesday night. It said pure religion and undefiled. It said to visit the sick and the wilderness and the fatherless. I'm telling you today, my friend, God's ways are strange. They are peculiar. And that, uh, when Jeremiah wrote these scriptures down, Amen. The people confessed him with their lips, but their hearts were far from him. I want you to know today, my friend, it's not your mind. It's not your tongue. It's the condition of your heart. Without God on the inside, without the Holy Spirit, amen, leading and guiding you, you'll never see what heaven looks like. Amen. You can be a fine, upstanding citizen in the community. You can be given the key to the city. Amen. You can be put on the who's who of society. Amen. But until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, my friend, amen, you'll split hell wide open. Preacher, why? Why would you say something like that on a beautiful day like this, on a beautiful place like this? I want you to understand something. Amen. The world is being rocked to sleep. Amen. With preachers telling them they're all right. Amen. Just keep going the way you are. I want you to understand if you keep on the course that you're on today, it leads you to destruction. I want you to know the children that you're raising, they're following in your footsteps, and they'll follow you right to the pits of hell if you keep going the way you're going. You say, well, preacher, maybe somebody might reach him. They might do it. Amen. But the odds are, amen, if you raise those children outside of church, if you don't teach them the Word of God, amen, the statues and the traditions of God, amen, not the things of the church, the things of God. Amen. I've been in some churches today that their traditions, amen, didn't line up with the Word of God. Amen. You say, preacher, are you judging me? I'm not to judge. I'm just a messenger boy today. God sent me here with a message to you. Amen. Just like Jeremiah did those people. Amen. Jeremiah was commanded to cry aloud and spare not. Jeremiah got so depressed. Amen. Listen, he said, I'll not make mention anymore of his name. I'll not preach his word anymore. He said, but there was a fire that shut up in my bones and I could not forbear. Or in other words, I couldn't stay or hold back. He had to give it all to him. I'm telling you today, when I leave here, amen, I'll, I'll I've delivered exactly what God has given me. And the ball is in your court. Your blood will be on your hands. He said, Jeremiah, I've made you a watchman on the wall. If you cry loud and these people flee, amen, you've saved yourself and them. But if you cry loud and they don't hear, your blood is still free. Your the blood will I not require. But if you don't tell them, I'll hold their blood on your hand. 
And I want you to know when you stand before God, your blood is not going to be on my hand because I'm here today to warn you there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There's pleasure in sin for a season. Amen. But I want you to understand it'll soon come to to an end and you'll stand before God today. In about three weeks from tomorrow, I'll be 51 years old. I'm telling you, it seemed like I turned around a few days ago. I was a little boy down on Spice Creek. I went to a visitation or a wake, whatever you want to call it, the funeral home Friday night of a dear friend that I grew up with. Her and my mom were best friends. They went to church together. I mean, they from West Virginia just like we was. They moved down here. They ended up going to the same church down here. We, her and my mom were real good friends. Hey Amen. Listen, I walked up to a lot of her family that I knew that I hadn't seen for years, but I knew who they was. Hey Amen. Listen, I started talking to them, and I looked at them. I said, you have no clue who I am. You know why? Because all they remembered was that little blonde-haired boy. Hey Amen. Now I'm no-haired boy. Can I tell you today? my friend this life is a vapor that appear for a short season and then vanish of the way you may think that you're young that you've got plenty of time but can I tell you this amen somebody your age amen listen is laying somewhere on a cold slab somebody your age is being pulled out of a car wreck somebody your age is having a heart attack somebody your age is being diagnosed with cancer you see brother the only thing that's sure today is you're going to die and have to give an account of your life before an angry God. You say, preacher, I thought God is a God of love. He's full of love and mercy now. But you go before that white throne, brother. It's judgment and judgment only today. Oh, preacher, you ought not talk like that. (laughs) When am I supposed to tell you? When am I supposed to warn you? Amen. I realize we're up here today. We're going to have some good fellowship here after a while. Amen. We're going to have a good time. I don't know about you. I'm having a pretty good one right now. Amen. Listen, I feel the presence of the Lord on this mountain. I'm glad that no matter where I go, he's there. Why is that, preacher? Because he lives and dwells on the inside. Amen. That nice air-conditioned building is a good place, a comfortable place to worship the Lord. But I'm telling you, I'd rather be on top of the mountain where God is than I would in a fine brick church where God ain't. I've been in a few of them places. I know these people have too. You know what? I ain't in no hurry to go back. Amen. But you get me to where God is. You get me to a place where I can feel the presence of God. Okay. That's where, that's my home. That's where I long to be, where God is and where God's people. Jeremiah was warning not only the common people, but he warned the king and the queen. said, you're going to have to come down off your high horse. Humble your heart before God. And the king said, Jeremiah, amen, should you go down and get us a, a word from the Lord? We've got all these other prophets, prophets down here. They're telling us, amen, that that good is coming, that everything is going right our way. Don't worry, eat, drink, and be merry. Jeremiah, what have you got to say? God said, Jeremiah, you write it down with a pen, and you put it, make it plain. And Jeremiah wrote the judgment of God that was coming because of their sin. The king took a pen knife. In other words, a thing that you would open a letter up with, and he cut it in little bitty pieces, and he threw it in the fire and God came to Jeremiah again said write it with an iron pen and write it up on the stone that he that reads it may run what are you saying preacher I'm saying if you don't know God you need to run to an altar and say God I've sinned against you and against heaven and the only other sin Amen. amen preacher if I do that what will happen Scripture tells me he will abundantly pardon. He that cometh to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, he'll in no wise cast out. Amen. Amen. There's enough of them out there telling you today. Amen. Just send your money and everything's going to be all right. 
Amen. Just reach out and claim it. Everything ain't going to be all right. I'm telling you, it rains on the just as well as the unjust. I'm telling you today, amen, we'll receive good at the hand of the Lord, but guess what? Amen. God, listen, now God's not going to render evil upon you, amen, but God will allow you, amen, the tempting, the trying of your faith. We covered that Wednesday night. Is it like precious gold that is tried by fire today? I'm telling you today, my friend, we don't always understand. Sometimes, amen, I listen, I've looked back and I've said, God, why? Why this, Lord? Why that? Lord, but man, but old Chris Christopherson, he wrote a song said like this, why me Lord, what did I ever do to deserve even one of these blessings, I'm telling you, I've been blessed more than I've been, listen, discouraged today, I've been up a whole lot more than I've been down, why, because if God be for you, who can be against you today, you can't change can the Ethiopian change his skin? Amen. Can the leper change his spots? You remember old Michael Jackson went down and had his skin bleached. Amen. You know what happened? Amen. Some of those dark blotches kept coming back out. Amen. Listen, he looked plumb horrible when he died. Amen. Listen, what wasn't fit. Amen. To look upon. Amen. I'm telling you, brother. Amen. Listen, I, I, I never have to run down. Amen. I might have a big nose, but I'll die with it. I might go ball headed. Amen. But I'll never buy her peace. You're saying, preacher, I'm saying God made me the way I am. Amen. Listen, I'm not ashamed of who I am. For what I am, I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. You can make fun of the way I look. Amen. Listen, I remember oh, Elijah, they made fun of him. Elisha. Amen. The children did said, Go up, thou bald head. Amen. Listen, about 50 kids. Amen. Listen, you know what he did? Amen. He cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two bears come down out of the woods and eat them. Every one of them children. You better be careful who you, amen, who you make fun of. I'm Tell you that it may come back to haunt you, amen. Right. amen. Two things in this world they say sure. Taxes. You know, and that's not true. People all the time, if I mean they're matter of fact, the governor of West Virginia owes the state of West Virginia millions of dollars and ain't paid them. My, my, my. You know that you can get by with it. If you got money, I'll throw that out there. If you got, if you're poor, they'll come after you. Take everything you got. There's one thing that you will not escape. That's death. And as death finds you, so will the judgment. You know, there's fellows running around preaching, or you know that you have a space to repent in purgatory. I heard the other day somebody said ten seconds. I've heard 10,000 years. Can I tell you today? Amen. When you leave this last breath, brother, that seals it. And that last breath goes out of this body. There's no hope. Amen. If you haven't made things right with God, the next thing that you see will be the flames of hell. The next thing you hear will be the screams of torment. The next thing you feel, oh Lord, will be the pain, the torment that's going on. Can I tell you today, it's an unending. Amen. Listen, brother, not only will you be in the lake of hell or in fire and in hell until the day of judgment, then you'll be, amen, stand before God and be cast from the judgment of God into the lake of fire, the Bible said, which burneth forever and forever. Amen. I don't care. Listen, I'm not saying there's not a bad person here. Amen. I'm not saying that today. I want you to understand something. Amen. You can be a great mother. You can be a great great father, husband, wife, whatever it may be. But unless you're born again by the Spirit of the living God, oh, listen, you're none of His today. You say, preacher, how do I get born again? I'm glad you ask. And then you say, Lord, I'm sorry. I mean from the depths of your heart. Lord, I'm sorry I've sinned. You don't have to go in detail. Brother, he's got a record. Hey, listen today. I'm telling you, and when you say I'm I'm sorry, forgive me, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know what will happen? You'll take the blood of Jesus. He'll wash that slate clean. Make you whiter than snow. He'll write your name in that land look of life. And all the demons of hell can't take it out. Amen. Amen. Preacher, how do you know when it'll happen? You'll know. 
How do you know, preacher? Because these things that you love, you'll hate. The people that you didn't like. You, I've heard stories. People go up and say, I, I went down to that church where all them hypocrites was. And they got saved and got up and couldn't find a one of them. <laughs> you know why God will change how you look at things? Here's what the scripture said. How do we know we have passed from death unto life? From death unto life. You love the brother. <laughs> you love the brother. Amen. You know, listen, I'm not saying you're not have enemies. I'm not saying that you not have troubles, but you'll love your enemies. You'll pray for them. Amen. That's what a real Christian does. Amen. You don't get even, you pray for them. Amen. Because I'm telling you, amen, God is bigger than what you are. Amen. And I ain't met anybody yet that can wrestle with God and win. Had a lady one night, got so mad at me, I thought she was going to hit me. I begged her, I said, we need to go to that altar and pray. Well, she stormed out of that church. I followed her to the vehicle. I said, please come back in. I said, I'm scared for you. If something, you, don't, you don't make things right today, something's going to happen. You know, a week later, that lady had a brain aneurysm and died. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying today, be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. He that is often reproved and hardeneth his heart, shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. That means there's no hope without remedy. You see, when there's a remedy, remedy means that something can be fixed. When there's no remedy, it means it can't be fixed. I want you to understand, I'm no different than you are. I'm no better than you are. The only thing that makes me different is the blood of Jesus Christ and the spirit that he put on the inside. That's what makes me different. That's what guides my life. I realize sometimes the old Jamie Fortner raises his head. Hey Amen. You can ask my wife and daughter. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. But can I tell you today? Hey Amen. Listen, there's not very many times like that. Hey Amen. Why? Because hey Amen. The strong man lives on the inside, and that's Jesus today. And that Spirit is greater. Hey Amen. Greater is He that's within me than He that's in the world. God is good all the time. I love the song that they sang. It said, don't gamble on life because you can't play the cards that death's going to deal. You know what the Bible said? In that day, no man has the power to retain the spirit. I don't know if you've ever watched anybody die. I've watched several. I haven't met one yet, not one yet, that was able to keep that breath. I've watched them fight. I've watched them struggle to the very last breath. I remember when my great-grandmother died, I was by the bedside. We looked like she took her last breath. That monitor went, that screen, it went flatline all the way across. That's back in the days they used to leave them things on. Amen. She had not breathed for 20 some seconds. That thing was flat. My grandmother let out one of them old Apache screams. Amen. Because her mommy just said, Dad, you know what? Amen. She reached out and grabbed one more breath. She wanted to stay. But guess what? That was it, brother. You don't have the power. You don't have the ability. Amen. To leave here or to stay here. When death comes your way, I promise you, you will leave. You will leave. Where will you go? Let me tell you something. That's not God's choice. That's yours. God said, Behold, I said before you a blessing and a curse, life and death. Choose this way whom you're going to serve, this day whom you're going to serve. It's your choice. You can choose heaven. You can choose hell. Why? You say, Preacher, why do people always look down when they talk about hell? You know why? Because the Bible said hell from beneath is rising to greet thee at thy coming. Hell from beneath. If I look down, you know what's under me? This earth, this ground. 
They tell me in the heart of this earth it's full of molten lava. That it's hot. Amen. I can tell you the stories about what happened over in Siberia. I ain't going to do that. Amen. Don't feel led to. Ask me after a while. I'll tell you. But I'll tell you this. Amen. Scientists are not known for serving God. When they left that place, all of them had the fear of God in them. Amen. As sure as you're here. I know a lady that was raised, not raised in church. Her grandmother was a Christian on one side and the other grandmother wasn't. And she watched, and she watched the one that wasn't. She watched her die. And, there was, and she, she struggled with how that she left this world. You could tell she was suffering. And her mom said, you know, everybody dies that way. She was at the bedside when the next grandmother died that knew God. She said, there's a difference. There's a difference. Can I tell you today? Amen. Listen, medication makes me put you unconscious. Amen. You might not show it. But can I tell you, when you're getting ready to leave this world, amen, before they come up, all this morphine that they would knock them out with, amen, they used to hear those stories. They'd say, raise the windows and let the smoke out of the room. Pull me up in the bed. My feet are going into the fire. Amen. Can I tell you today, brother, amen, as sure as you're here, there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun today. You see, preacher, why? Why do I have to go to that place? Because he was born after Adam's nature. You have the nature of man on the inside that leads to destruction. But when you're born again that second time, that second birth, I don't remember a thing about August the 8th, 1966. I don't remember the thing. But I can tell you what. I'll never forget December the 31st, 1976, when he changed my life. Amen. Amen. I ain't been perfect. <laughs> boy, but he has. <laughs> I ain't always been good, but boy, he has. <laughs> He's a good God. God, listen, this is what he said. All ye that are labored and heavy laden, come unto me. I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. But I'm going to tell you what he did say. It's what he said. He said all the day long, Proverbs chapter 1, he said, all the day long I've stretched out my hand to a gain slain people. I've called and you refused. You've laughed at me. You've mocked me. He said, when your fear cometh as destruction as a whirlwind, I'll laugh at you. I'll mock you. Can I tell you what a man sows, they will reap. If you sow to the flesh, if all you ever do is just seek Seek to fulfill my, 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 the desires of the flesh. It amazes me. It amazes me. And don't leave here mad at me. It amazes me how many, how many parents want their children, don't get mad at me, to be an all-star somewhere on a baseball team and never teach them about God. Teach them how to cheer and how to tumble and never teach them about God. Well, you know, we mentioned, we celebrate Easter, we celebrate Christmas, but, do you, how, but your home, how is your home? Because I'm telling you, them babies will follow you wherever you go. They'll walk in your footsteps. Dad, that son will live the same life you live. You mistreat your wife, you go out on your wife, guess what your son's going to do? You hit your wife, guess what your son's going to do? You hit your wife, I tell you what ought to happen, you ought to go to jail. Amen, preacher. Amen. Right. Wife, you hit your husband, you want to happen, you ought to go to jail. Right. You don't hear that very often. Amen. Amen. It's still the truth. We need to understand something today. When two people come to God and they get married, they're one. They're one. And the only way that you'll ever truly, listen to me today, you may say, I love my spouse with all of my heart. Amen. You love them with all you're capable of loving, but you'll never love them with a perfect love until you get the love of God on the inside. Amen. And that love of God. Scripture said a threefold cord is not even, 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 
not easily broken. You take either one of those strands, either one of those strands, they can be broken. You tie them together, they're a little bit stronger. Amen. I mean, they may, let's say they have a tensile strength of 500 pounds per strand. You put those two strands together, it may go up to 1,500. But you add that third one in there, it'll go to 5,000. Can I tell you today, if God be for you, who can be, nobody can break you today. They'll not break down your marriage. They'll not break down your home. If God is wrapped around it today, He's what binds it together. You see, because that's what they do with the rope. They wrap those two and then they'll wrap that third one around the thir- on the outside. That's what God does. He surrounds. Can I tell you today, He loves you. I realize today you might be getting hungry. Maybe you're tired. Maybe your back's starting to hurt from the benches. But I want you to know this. God loves you. This preacher loves you. This church loves you. And again, those children need to be raised they meant not to sent to church, taken to church by mom and dad, by, by a Bible-believing, preaching church. Amen. You see, because everybody that carries a Bible under their arm calls themselves a preacher of God, ain't. Some of them are wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. I want them to come and get a song. If you're not a Christian, don't you leave this place without becoming a Christian. I'm going to stand over by this bench over here. Come on, guys. Get a song ready. I'm going to stand over here. I want the deacons to come up here. We're all ready to pray with you whenever you're ready. God loves you today. He cares for you. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance today. What about it? As the whole congregation stands, if you don't know Jesus today, let today be the day. Young men, young women, Amen. You may think you'll have your whole life ahead of you. Honey, I preach the funerals for the babies all the way up. All the way up. Dad has no respect of persons. Has no respect on the young. He'll come after you. You're one step ahead of death today. I pray you find God before death finds you. They sing right now.